What's up guys? Thanks for coming to Gaming Canada with me. Today we're going to be talking about a new update to Snickerstream that is now officially out of beta and you are going to be able to do some crazy stuff with it. As you can see here on the screen, spoiler alert, you can stream multiple 3DSs to one computer. All the Pokemon streamers out there, rejoice! You'll be able to shiny hunt on four different consoles at the exact same time if you wanted to. This is not a tutorial video, but I'm going to run you through some of these new updates and even show you a video from Rattle Trap PM himself. So why don't you guys check this out and uh, maybe get some popcorn or something. Am I eating popcorn upside down? You are eating popcorn upside down. <laughs> over here on Snickerstream's GitHub repository. And as you can see, this was released four days ago and it is the definitive update. And the reason that it is called that is because everything that the creator wanted to put into the original Snickerstream has now been implemented. And that is also why it is out of beta. There's a link to this GitHub page down in the description if you want to go ahead and download one of these zips, get the X64 if you have a 64-bit version of Windows and the X86 for a 32-bit. If we scroll down a little bit, we can check out some of the new features. The one that is most exciting to me is the advanced setting menu, which lets you change all the variables that could only be changed by directly editing the any file before. Now, if you remember my last video on Snickerstream, it was about the new frame limiting option. And to enable this, you had to edit the any file in Notepad or something similar manually. Now with this new advanced tab, we can go ahead and limit the frame simply by just changing the number right here. The one that everyone is here for is the multiple 3DS streaming to a single PC is now supported after patching NTR and changing the listening port. Now there is a video guide here, we're going to go watch a little bit of it in a second and I will put a link of it in the description. But real quick, you remember the advanced tab? Well patching NTR is built into this advanced tab and this basically allows you to patch your NTR bin on your 3DS so that it accepts a different port so that you can connect multiple to different ports on your PC. This is the whole reason that you're able to use all the different 3DS's. It's really cool. On direct to draw mode for the graphics, you have a couple of different new options. Individual screen scaling, so you can now change the bottom and top screens individually. You can also now pop up the other screen into full screen mode with the push of a button. You can add your own hexadecimal hotkeys into the any file in case you wanted to maybe do that. You could return to the connection window capture a screenshot, scale up or scale down the screens. There's a bunch of new layouts like non-stretched full screen, separate windows for the bottom and top screens. There's now support for custom presets. So if you had custom presets for a specific games, such as maybe you wanted graphics set up a certain way, then you could go ahead and have that set up and it will change everything except for the IP. Then you don't have to reopen Snickerstream each time you want to change them, but you're going to have to restart your 3DS if Remote Play has already been started. This was a suggestion by Elder Cub. Shout out to Trincid who made the new icon for Snickerstream. And, uh, you know, that's about it for the main things that you guys would be interested in. Again, I just want to touch on the title, the definitive update. Creator says here that this doesn't mean that there won't be any future updates. There's still some very experimental stuff that they want to try. Now that we've gone through that, let's check out that video I spoke of that demonstrates the multiple 3DS streaming. So here in the video, he's gone ahead and opened up the advanced settings with the SD card in. And once you click patch NTR and change the port, it's going to ask you to look for your boot NTR selector folder and then get the NTR.bin. And you can go ahead and patch that. You'll have to do that on all your separate 3DSs that you want to connect. And now go ahead and he's putting the micro SD card back in and restarting both NTR and Snickerstream. Now he's clicking connect and the screen is now connecting to the 3DS. And bada boom, bada bing, there's a 3DS and it's streaming to the PC. On the top of Snickerstream's title bar, you can see it has the new port that it is listening for. This next part of the video was brought to you in part by Elder Cub and to Jesse who did some tests using real 3DSs. Here's a screenshot of it accepting two different 3DS's at once. And here is another screenshot of three 3DS's and another shot with five 3DS's connected to the same PC. That is absolutely crazy. Are you guys ready for this? You're probably going to need to have a pretty good PC to be able to connect this many at once. I suppose that's about it for the video. If you guys enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to go check out that other video and give it a thumbs up. If you guys wanted to see me live stream, I live stream every single day over on twitch.tv slash gaming Canada. There will be a link down in the description. 
Any questions you want to ask, there's a comment section. Go down there, start typing. I'll catch you guys next time. Much love. Peace.